Hey folks, good morning. James Azar here with the Cyber Hub Podcast for your daily practitioner brief. Happy Cyber Security Awareness Month. It's National Cyber Security Awareness Month. It's the month of October. This month we carry about educating others about the threats of cyber security and so much more. With that being said, make sure you subscribe to our podcast right now. You can do so by just hitting the subscribe button on YouTube or on your favorite podcast listening platform. You can also go to our website, cyberhubpodcast.com, where you can see all of our content and view it there at your convenience as well. And without further ado, folks, let's get right into today's practitioner brief. I do apologize about my voice. I'll I'll explain that here in just a minute. Um, Microsoft issues an updated patching directions for zero logon. Obviously, we know that the bad guys are out there. Our opponents are out there and really targeting this zero logon vulnerability, uh, which is tracked as CVE 2021-472. It has a CVSS score of 10 being the most critical. Kevin Beaumont, who's the senior threat intelligence analyst at Microsoft Threat Intel, wrote in a blog that somebody sent um, hundreds of login attempts matching the exploit chain and then attempted to reset the domain computer password to blank successfully. This broke the domain controller for authentication. Microsoft issues a four-step plan to protect the user's environment and prevent outages. Update domain controllers with a patch that was released on August 11th. Find devices that are making vulnerable connections by monitoring event logs. Address non-compliant devices making vulnerable connections. And enable enforcement mode to address CVE 2021-472 in your environment. Really, really important. We've talked about zero logon for the last few weeks, but really, really critical is update, patch, and get get it done. It might be a bit more complex, and that's why Microsoft has issued these new directions. An interplanetary storm botnet infects 13,000 Mac and Android devices. A new variant of the interplanetary storm malware has been discovered, which comes with fresh detection evasion tactics and now targets Mac and Android devices. Uh, Researchers say the malware is building a botnet with a current estimated of 13,500 infected machines across 84 countries worldwide. That number does continue to grow. Half of the infected machines are in Hong Kong, South Korea, and Taiwan. Other infected systems are in Russia, Brazil, the U.S., Sweden, and China. While the botnet that the malware is building does not have clear functionality yet, this gives the campaign operators a backdoor into infected devices so that they can later be used for crypto mining, DDoS, or other large-scale attacks, according to a blog post by Barracuda. What's really interesting for me about this specific malware, folks, is the fact that it's taken over and it's building these backdoors into these IoT devices and, and, and building an army of bots with no clear usage, meaning... They're just taking advantage of what they can, and then they plan on doing the execution for it. So very, very interesting. You can read more about this on our website at cyberhubpodcast.com. And finally, an OAuth consent phishing ramps up with Microsoft Office 365 attacks. An APT known as TA2552 has been spotted using Auth2 or other token-based authorization methods to access Office 365 accounts in order to steal user contacts and mail. The OAuth is an open standard for access delegation, commonly used as a way for people to sign into services without entering a password using sign-in status on another trusted service or website. Uh, The most visible example of this would be something you see that says sign-in with Google, for example, or sign-in with Facebook, essentially. Once you're able to authenticate that, then they know that you are who you say you are. According to researchers from uh, Proofpoint, targets uh, receive a well-crafted uh, lures asking them to click a link which carries the legitimate Microsoft third-party apps consent page. Once signed into their Office 365 account, the user is redirected to the official Office 365 consent process that prompts them to grant permissions to the actor's application. The domain that catch the OAuth tokens are often registered via Namecheap and hosted on Cloudflare. A very, very interesting method of attack. That's it for our practitioner brief here today, folks. I do apologize. I have um, tested positive for COVID-19. It's uh, my second time. Uh, First time I had COVID-19 was in March of this year, and I have uh, tested positive again yesterday, which is why I've been under the weather the last few days. I plan on, um, I've postponed our tech corner for this week. I've postponed many things as I try to rest up over the next few days so I can hit next week off with a bang so bear with me this thing is real folks i mask i take a lot of 
I mean, I'm very responsible when it comes to this. So is my family. Um, and unfortunately, uh, both myself and my household have contracted COVID-19 and we're currently uh, self-quarantining, obviously, and then taking all the necessary precautions. This thing is very, very real. Um, Chinese have been trying to get rid of me for over a decade now, and uh, uh, they're not going to be successful this time either, folks. Uh, that's it for us here today. Um, we'll be back with so much more on Monday. Until then, folks, stay healthy, stay safe, and most importantly, stay cyber safe. 